that kind of clientele that they have in their practice. Blood doping be good for COPD and improve oxygen? Dr. Gwen Vaughn, what do you think of blood doping for COPD? Blood doping. I, I believe they're talking about packing red cells uh, like the athletes do to simulate living at altitude so that they can get more of an oxygen carrying capacity. I've never um, heard of that done. You've never heard of that being done? Really? Well, I've heard of it done for like sports. Oh, but oh okay. But never for COPD. Doesn't it happen naturally? Yeah, they get. They yeah, that, it actually happens. Uh, the happens. body does it. Increase oxygen for breathing. No, you breathe for the oxygen. It's the other way around. Uh, and, yeah, boy, that really threw me. Increase oxygen for breathing. No, no. And the problem with COPD, COPD is not oxygen. The problem with COPD is carbon dioxide. They can't get the carbon dioxide out. And, in fact, that's why oxygen is bad for people with COPD. Because they are no longer having their breathing being driven by low oxygen, like people without COPD. Their breathing is, because their carbon dioxide, um, all the way around. What do you mean? I always get that backwards. Which is it? What? COPD is, is CO2 de oxygen dependent, oh, which is Yeah, they get high CO2 and then that. Right. So we, oxygen decreases the we are stimulated to breathe by carbon dioxide uh -huh. going up. As our carbon dioxide level goes up, we need to breathe, to ventilate, to unload that carbon dioxide. Otherwise, we're going to get acidic. Our blood will turn acidic. When you have COPD, that carbon dioxide level gets up so high that that doesn't work anymore. And so then they become oxygen dependent. An oxygen dependent breather, if they are given oxygen, since they no longer are driven to breathe to blow off the carbon dioxide, the oxygen is at a good level, they stop ventilating, they stop breathing. They don't have a natural drive to breathe, and so their carbon dioxide level goes up even higher, and again, that's not being used by the body anymore, in their case, to drive ventilation, so they get dangerously sick with acidosis. So that's why in COPD, uh, the use of oxygen, which does have to be used in many patients, needs to be done very carefully and needs to be directed by a, a doctor who's seeing what's going on with the carbon dioxide levels. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, and we've seen it happen where people just on their own uh, go ahead and start taking oxygen because they have access to it for some reason. Maybe somebody died and left a oxygen container. And usually there's no problem. Most often it's not a problem, but, but it can be. All right, so that was a great, great session. I uh, wanted to talk more about um, future plans for doing more, Ask the Doctor. I'm glad to have 32 of you participating today. That's great. We're getting our numbers back up to what they were before all this stuff with buying the new building kind of distracted us. So uh, we do encourage you to swipe right to subscribe and tell your friends. And the old, uh, yes, thank you for the hearts too. I forgot about that. The old shows or the old Periscopes can be found at Auburn Medical Group channel on YouTube. So until next time, this is Dr. Mark Vaughn and Dr. Gwen Vaughn, who's staying off camera, but he's, do you want to just show your face just, just for shortest little, there he is. He, he really is here. I'm not just imagining it. So until next time, we, yes, you're welcome. Thank you, Rusty. We will tell you to stay in good health.